So welcome to web assembly. Um, sometimes I will call it WASM because it's a simpler, so a game changer for a web. I'm Marjan Todorovic, and yeah, I would like to simply explain a, l a little basics, what that technology, etc. Did anyone heard yet about WebAssembly? Good, fine. So, first, let's say thanks to our sponsors for allowing us to be on this event. And now, a little bit about me. So, as I said, my name is Mladen Todorovic, and yeah, on these social networks, I'm usually M. Todor, mainly at everywhere. But I don't look like this. I usually look like that. That's my face. Yeah, Gabor used wrong image, but yeah. Uh, so, I have, yeah, I have started with the PHP in MySQL like around 19 years ago. So, I have some experience in that area. Um, one period I worked as a um, front-end JavaScript developer around seven years, mainly on XJS framework. I don't know if anyone heard about that. After that, um, I worked as a full-stack developer for a real-time bidding system. And yeah, I was mother and father for that system. And currently, so since two years, I'm in Hubert Borda as a maintainer of um, Thunder distribution. Who have heard for a Thunder distribution? Uh, we need more hands. <laughs> uh, so yeah, first, I would like to give some introduction what applications we have currently because WebAssembly is interesting in a way to see how it fills the gap. So what we know currently is uh, that we have a native applications, we have web applications, but we have also applications on devices, on different operating system, different hardware, etc. So every of them has some good thing and bad thing. If we take in account like native applications, they have really good performance because, yeah, here, like that. Is it better? Okay, good. So, um, yeah, native application has good performance because they are mainly compiled for operating system for our underlying hardware, so they can execute quickly without without any additional overhead. Also, what's beneficial for uh, developers, we can use a lot of different languages, starting with the low-level languages like C, C++, Rust, Python, I don't know what. But negative side of that is that it's uh, difficult to distribute that because you have uh, different, different platforms, different hardwares, you have to compile for every of them, and that's a mess because there is uh, so much different um, software, uh, s operating systems available there. And then also security is a, l a little bit problem from a user perspective because you have to be sure what application you are running because they can access your files and do some damage on your, on your operating systems. In other hand, we have uh, web applications. For them, it's, when we are talking about distributing that, it's not a problem because we have one platform, so we know it, it is browser, we can always execute that code in any browser, it's available or an, on any operating system, on phones or, and all, almost everywhere, on all devices. Also security is good because browsers take care about sandboxing these applications that they cannot exit and damage our system. But we have a problem with the performance because it's still, um, performance is not good because browser has to compile the, the code and execute it and run it and that's not so, uh, that's a little bit problematic. And we also have a limit to one language in, in that area and that's, you know, JavaScript, one language to rule them all. And that's a little bit also problem. So how WebAssembly fits in all that? So it, it kind of bring good parts for, from these two, 
from these two kinds of applications or types of applications. So it, it brings us faster applications, almost native performance. It allows us to use the, as many languages as we want in theory because it's possible to compile from any language into WebAssembly language. If you have a compiler that can compile LLVM language, that's uh, some intermediary representation of uh, binary code. And then also it runs on any platform. So if you have a browser, it runs in a browser because it's uh, designed for uh, executing in a browser. So it simply provides you flexibility to run C or C++ code in browser. So I will just tell a little bit about the WebAssembly as a project, how it what it is and how it started. So it's um, it's um, open standard that defines binary format that can be executed in browser. So it provides a compilation target for a low le level languages. Currently the most, the best supported are C, C++ and Rust because Rust community has did a lot of things there. And it also, it was, um, it has also near native performance because code is compiled and then executed in, executed in browser. So there is no overhead for interpretation as in case of JavaScript. And um, it's designed to run along the side the JavaScript. So it's not, they are not excluding each other. You can still have a JavaScript code and WebAssembly code and even you need JavaScript to, to execute the, the WebAssembly methods. So how, how that project started? So it first was announced in the middle 2015 and uh, the major players were the all companies that, that develop browsers, Mozilla, Microsoft, Google, and Apple. They have a, they, they organize a community group and define the, define the MVP in the March 2017, what they need to have for an MVP product. And it was recently after that, it was also implemented like three months or so. And we already have quite good support for WebAssembly in current browsers. So globally around 74% has WebAssembly support. The, the major, the major lose in on, is on UC browser for Android and Internet Explorer. But yeah, Internet Explorer is I think only security releases. And the new player is a Samsung internet, but they, they are supporting since, since 20 days. So that's good. So yeah, the, the question is um, how we can benefit from WebAssembly, how we can use that. So the, the one key is that we have a bigger computational power. So if we, if we have a binary code that can run faster, so we have a better computational power in a, in a front end in the, in the browsers. So we can make more ritual applications with more complicated and complex algorithms that were not possible before with the JavaScript or something like that. Additionally, um, we can offload computation. Currently, we, we have patterns that whatever, whenever we need some expensive task to be executed, we are sending that to server, server computes that and then give us result. It is possible that we all offload that to the clients. Simply execute in the, in the browser, there is no need for uh, network connections to have server resources for that because it can be done in the browser easily. As I already mentioned, we have security out of the box. We don't have to take care about that because browser developers did a lot of work. And that's also interesting. We don't need any more specialized web developers. You don't have to know HTML. You don't have to know CSS. You don't have to know JavaScript. You can simply create, create web application in the C, Rust, Python probably in future, etc. And for me, most interesting is that we can start reusing libraries or projects or applications that are developed for decades. 
like 20 years or so, we don't have to retype them in JavaScript to use them in a web. So I would like to list just some of the software branches that have the, the biggest interest in WebAssembly, like gaming. Yeah, it was, gaming was not possible in, in the browsers before. Now when you, when you can simply compile your already existing engines in C or C++ directly to the browser, yeah, you can easily use that. Crypt, crypto, then yeah, software graphics and animation, computer vision, what for me is also interesting, emulation. I'm always thinking like having the, you know, web, I don't know, editor in the, in the Drupal, having the preview how it will look like on smartwatch. That would be possible if we would have compiled emulators for a web, and so on. Um, since it's, it's a still new technology, there are some problems. So if, if you are planning to use that, simply to have that on your mind. Like currently, there is a problem with communicating with DOM, because there is no DOM API directly from WebAssembly. So if you want to communicate with DOM, you have to go over the JavaScript. That's a little bit expensive. Other problem is that um, executing, executing um, WebAssembly methods, it's, it's also a little bit expensive because the, the, the browser has to prepare application to run it. So it has to, be, it has to jump from JavaScript execution to WebAssembly ex execution. And that's a little bit expensive. So if you have a, some simple method that does one plus one, it's not useful to do that in WebAssembly. It's useful to just do it in JavaScript. But if you have some bigger task to offload that you can offload to the WebAssembly module, then it gets beneficial. And other, just a moment. So other problems is that there is a problem with the loading time. Um, Firefox Nightline Develop has solved that. I have seen some, I think someone kept the React Native application. There was a Unity VR. It would be way faster to load that in Firefox. Um, the problem is that because I think Unity compiles in WebAssembly. The problem is that browsers have to still do some uh, transcoding of the WebAssembly code. So Chrome currently fetches the full file. So you are waiting for full file to be fetched on the browser and then it's transcoded to and possible to be executed. But it's possible to do that on the way when you are fetching, getting the packages one by one. So Firefox already implemented that, but as I said, only night, nightly and develop. So the loading is way, way, way faster, like three times or so. Um, yeah, and the, the biggest problem is always adaptation of the technology. So if you don't have a nice tooling around that, since it's new, it's a little bit problematic. Again, Firefox is leading there. Uh, they have added the so to say breakpoint possibilities. So if you have a C code and you compile it with the mapping to the WebAssembly, Firefox is able to display that and you can simply put the breakpoint in your C code and it will stop execution at that place. So that's, that's really nice. Um, yeah, compilers are also getting easier. I tried that like six months ago and now and it's way better uh, experience. So it's easier to install the SDK and simply compile the things and try them. And also what's interesting, a lot of libraries starting to have the WebAssembly as a compiling target. For example, if someone have heard of uh, OpenCV, it's an open computer vision library, they have added WebAssembly as a possible compilation target. Qt has also started to migrate some things for um, to, to WebAssembly, etc. So, but as I said, things are getting better. So there is already support because WebAssembly has started from initiative that this did AsyncJS, if someone had, has heard of. So Chrome has already added that AsyncJS is directly transferred to WebAssembly when it's loaded. 
that's, that also speeds up execution like 30% or something like that. Um, there is an issue with the threads because a lot of C code and C libraries have threads supported, but that's not so easy in the, in the browser. So there is an idea to use workers as a threads. That's also in development. Support for a single, um, how it's called, single instruction, multiple, multiple data. That's where you can, with one um, CPU instruction, adjust multiple data immediately. That speeds up the, the, the computation. And that's used mainly in some media applications for uh, images, video, etc. Um, exceptions are problem currently. Uh, there is no native support for exceptions, but um, underlying libraries, when you compile like C++, adds that. That, that slows the, the, the running execution time, but still you can exclude that if you want to get, get performance. As I said, faster loading time, it's already in the Firefox added. Function calls should be improved, and the one of the biggest problem is um, DOM API, but, it, but I think that there is already proposal for that. They just have to get agreement. And as I promised, demo. It's always interesting to see how it actually looks on, um, in practical examples. So just let me exit. Oh, I'm just joking, it's a slide. <laughs> so, where is my mouse? Somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So this one, this is one interesting demo because it, it shows the, the, the difference in performance. So we have a JavaScript engine running animations and WebAssembly engine running animations. And how many, so to say, um, animations we have or those. So if we switch to JavaScript now and WebAssembly for only eight, it's not a big deal. But if we say, like, uh, let's make it 100, it's more interesting. So if we say 100, it's a little bit glitchy. If we switch to WebAssembly, it gets a little bit better. So that's, that's the sum difference. So this demo is an uh, interesting representation of what I ex have explained, like extensive functions. So I just do... So here you can see comparison of a JavaScript algorithm directly with, with WebAssembly algorithm for some specific um, algorithms on uh, image changes. And you will see like in this case, there should be some percentage. There is no percentage. Uh, I don't see it. Ah, yeah, fine, good. So it's way, way faster, for example, in this case, but some other algorithms, JavaScript gets faster. This is still faster, still faster in WebAssembly. Yeah, for example, this one is sometimes it, it's slower for a, for a WebAssembly because simply running that algorithm for, for every frame is, yeah, calling that is a more expensive than actually computing you need. So I, I played also a little bit with, the, with, the, um, with available libraries. So I used the uh, Open Computer Vision library that I have mentioned. And I have, because they have also provided deep neural network support, so it's possible that you use some learned deep neural networks and run some algorithms. So I simply made some image classifications, so to say, auto-tagging of images in the browser, so not send on the server. Um, I have also uh, made a module from that. It's uh, image auto-tagging, but it's still in prototype status. So um, when we, let's say, take this image, it's some bird drinking milk, or I don't know. So you will see immediately here that it recognizes bird, there is a bottle, there is a table. 
and etc. I mean, the, the, the model that I used is uh, quite limited. It only has nine P classes, but it's still a nice example. Or if I take something else, but is interesting, for example, here. It will recognize, like, there is a person, car, umbrella, and handbag, even if car for, what, for us would be difficult because it's kind of blurry. But yeah, main, main things are recognized. That, that's possible in the browser, and it takes second and point three to do that. I, I did similar um, example for uh, recognizing the face and using the focal point for a face. And in that case, uh, the biggest problem was that executing that in the browser was the faster than uploading the file on the local machine. So I needed to adjust that stuff. Yeah. Um, what's also interesting is this, Unity. Doesn't load fast. Yeah, it's, it's one of the first examples of, of uh, So it's one of the first examples of, of WebAssembly. If you, if you can see, like there is a lot of uh, particles, like rain particles, then light reflections. That's all expensive, but it runs smoothly here. So yeah, that's the things that will happen soon. Um, Qt also did some things like I just need to zoom uh, out, I think, yeah. So they have also, they are currently converting library by library, but yeah, in future maybe we'll, we will have such charts. It doesn't look nice because of the resolution, yeah. What's also interesting from Qt is, uh, yeah, hmm. again, resolution is a problem. It's actually text editor, but not nice here. Yeah, something like port. Uh, there is also some place where you can experiment if you are interested. It's a WebAssembly studio. You can create project in C Rust, and they also have a added support for a TypeScript. So you can simply play around to see how it looks. Yeah, so back to presentation. Yeah, I know that you are all hyped now. You would like to try that, so I will help you. Where to start? So you can go to official site, check the Mozilla documentation. It's also interesting if you are interested how it looks more in depth, technology underlying in the browser. I suggest the introduction, cartoon introduction to WebAssembly by Lynn Clark. It's really interesting some nice uh, uh, comics, cartoons. Um, then WebAssembly Rocks, it's collection of the articles or, or projects that are using the WebAssembly. It's not up to date so much, but still nice resource to start with. WebAssembly Weekly Newsletter, that's really nice because you can also go through the history of Weekly and that's up to date, so that's in nice. Um, also WebAssembly code. And currently existing tools are Imscript, and that's the, the, the first tool to start with because it provides SDK, and with that you can download all necessary things because if you are compiling directly from C to, to WebAssembly, then Imscript can use binary. Uh, but in case you are using other languages, then it just does compiling from LLVM language to the WebAssembly and uses another front-end, so to say, compiler. In case of C, it's a C lang. Then assembly script, it's um, support for, a, for a TypeScript. As I already showed the WebAssembly Studio and I suggest using the Firefox for uh, experimenting with that because it's way faster and works smoothly. Yeah, I would just like to show one more interesting thing. Like, this is announced on the Google K 
keynote or something like that. AutoCAD took the code all 35 years compiled, and now there is a uh, AutoCAD in in a in a web. So what's also interesting thing for uh, us as a uh, Drupal developers. We all have heard of Gutenberg and, and uh, WordPress, I guess. So one developer took, uh, they have some parser in JavaScript to parse the markup language of what's used by WordPress. And he implemented that in, in Rust and compiled to WebAssembly and, and run that in comparison to the JavaScript. And he got some interesting results, like in average 60, 66, 67% improvement, but if you see here, like these results are really way, way better improvements. So, yeah. That's it. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? I can repeat the question. I can, I can repeat the question. <laughs> of course, that's, that's one of the first, imp uh, so question was, does anyone use that for a crypto minus? Yeah, that was the one of the first implementation, but that's good, it helps technology improving. Yeah, there are crypto miners like in advertising, so the ad is loaded on your page and it uses the web assembly and yeah, there are crypto miners inside. That's, it was reported like why my machine is using so much CPU. And then they have found that there is actually the miner implemented in web assembly, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the question was like in JavaScript you could detect the crypto miner, but in WebAssembly not. Well, actually, it yeah, it is dif more difficult because the um, the language it's it's not so readable. But still, you can you can you can see how it looks. You still get that, and it has so to say human readable representation. I need somewhere here. something that one so for example why I don't see anything here I did console could be related with the plus minus it it has I, it is visible in Firefox, but it has human readable representation. It's not just bits. You can see like call and then function name, and there are also loops in that language. It, it's a binary representation, but not really as an assembler, as a machine language. It's a little bit layer above, so to say. So it, some people does directly uh, writing in, in Wasm language in that representation, who can read that head down. Any other question? No? Good. Then cue for a lunch. <laughs>